The Horizon case is here, with 17 community-made weapon skins. I spoke with all of them, and they shared with me secrets. Secrets about their creations. Click on the timestamps in this video's description to go to the weapon you'd like to know more about. The Org Amber Slipstream by Dabes is the fourth of this design to be accepted. By this point, he doesn't have a lot more to say about it, other than that he was pleasantly surprised when it was picked. He and Slimeface have a bit of ongoing banter where they take credit for each other's work. So when speaking with Slimeface, of course he assured me that this Org design was all his idea. The Revolver Survivalist by Ross is from a series of skins that he started way back in 2014. He revisited it later with an improved knowledge of skin design and worked to make it better and more rugged looking. He's pleased that Valve appreciates the work he invested into it and is happy that it made it into this case. Dual Beretta's Shred by SHPR were originally named Winter Raider and are a part of a collection of 14 different weapons with this design. These were all made almost two years ago, but have only just seen their first entry accepted with this case. They use the spray paint finish, which means that each design looks unique. Following the success of the 5.7 design, Teo advised that Mozen made other weapons with the same capillary style. He made four others, but is pleased that the MP9 design was chosen as he likes it the most. As an easter egg, he puts a heart on the magazines of these weapons. The 5.7s sports a larger, more fleshed out design, but there wasn't enough space for the same thing on the MP9, so he drew several in the style of old platform games instead, which you can only see in game after dropping a magazine to the floor. Teo specialises in metallic, 3D, bumpy looking designs, and the P90 traction is no different. It sports surfaces made of metal and rubber, using the gunsmith finish to give him the flexibility to texture it realistically and to make it look convincingly bumpy. Although named Traction, it is part of his Tread series, from which two other skins have already been accepted, though these have also been called different things. The CZ imprint and revolver grip are cousins of this design. The Tech 9 Snack 9 by PTP was an experiment for him, an opportunity to use normal maps to make convincing looking scales. He first attempted it on a P250 design, but wasn't too impressed with the result. The tubular shape of the Tech 9 was ideal though, as he believes it grabs the Fong reflections in more lighting conditions than a flat surface can achieve. He thinks this makes the design look more visually striking from a first person perspective, without needing to resort to odd angles and lighting conditions to see the 3D effect. He also thinks the shape of the Tech 9 was perfect, since the snake is also round. The Glock Warhawk by Puchara and Khan was the first thing he worked on in Substance Painter. This helped him to experiment with the program's tools and to learn the basics, which he can then build upon with future projects. It uses the gunsmith finish and a small amount of baked lighting to give the design more depth. He would like to thank Dima for helping him with this design. The G3SG1 High Seas by Slimeface was an opportunity to experiment with realistic materials, as he had been previously working on other styles like the Bloodspot collection. He chose the High Seas because he wanted to do something themed around pirates. And who can blame him? It was designed with an alpha texture in mind, as this controls the metallic finish in Specular Layer. This wasn't included in the initial release, but I suspect his post over on Reddit, which gained a lot of traction, got their attention and they rolled out an update to include it. Conveniently, this update fell between the time I got the footage for this video and when I was going to release it, so I managed to get both. Here you can see a comparison and the difference this alpha texture makes. Some parts of the weapon appear plain without it. He says the high seas uses a technique he used a while ago on the Mac 10 Mother of Pearl design. Only of course with the G3SG1, this was only part of the look, with the rest appearing metallic and 3D. His friend, Dabes, would like to say that this was all his idea. The Nova Toy Soldier by Hexeth was made because he wanted to mimic the simple, superficial style of toy soldiers, but whenever he tried, the results were very one-dimensional and flat looking. The solution came to him one day when he was in the toilet and he spotted a cleaning agent in a bright green bottle. He took this back to his room and tried copying every detail. Every scuff mark, every speck of dust and dirt. It required eight different layers to achieve. He hand-painted lines to make it look clear even on minimum graphic settings then worked on hiding the Benetti inscription behind drawn on stickers. Using the alpha channel, he then drew a tank, a car and little men. This was an actual drawing he had done when he was four years old. It's placed where it is so that if a name tag is used, it looks as though it sat in the back of the car. As the wear of this design increases, more of the sketch becomes visible, making battle scarred skins actually have more detail than the higher grades do. He's pleased that Valve appreciated this design. The CZ-75 Eco by Love Croissant isn't the first Eco design to be used. A Galil already exists with this style. It's a double meaning of economic and ecological, 
though so far the patterns have only been used in the more exclusive, restricted and classified classes. The series was intended to be for weapons that you can buy on Eco Rounds. The colours came first, and the patterns later for each of the designs. There's a barcode on each weapon, intended to be a bit of an easter egg. The AWP Paw by Danny Dem contains a nice anagram, but there's a lot more to it than that. Danny Dem kindly spent loads of time collecting material for me to use in this video. The design started in 2015 with his Empire skins. This was the first version, but he wasn't happy with it. He thought it looked too confusing and that there was too much empty space between them. So he returned to the drawing board and eventually made this one. He said it was like a puzzle, trying to figure out how to piece them all together. It gave them different colours that it was easy to distinguish between them. And this design made it to the game but in a green style. The Orc Paw is kind of like the next version of this design. But rather than imps, he chose cats and dogs. He's an animal lover and owns two cats who he says try to bite and play with his digital pencil when he's working. They were like little terrorists, and hence he came up with the idea for the skin. Dogs are typically seen as good, so he made them the CTs, and cats being more mischievous, he made them the terrorists. They all represent different character skins from CSGO. He loved the interactions between the imps in the older designs and elaborated on this, fitting many small stories into this new skin of his. He highlighted a few in this image for me. There are 52 different characters, up from 31 in the Empire design. He says there are a few nods to memes, movies and games, but he'll leave it to the community to spot them. He talked me through the painstaking work of getting it to tile, how it ended up being over 500 layers in Photoshop, and how he developed a new technique to squeeze more than four colours into the final spray paint finish. He was working blind in Photoshop, having to load them into Counter-Strike to see how well they represented the original colours. He ended up in a seemingly endless cycle of trial and error to try and keep the colours as faithful to the original designs as he could. He applied a shiny layer to the eyes, sunglasses and metal areas. He even made an animated banner for it, this being the first animation that he has ever worked on. All in all, he wouldn't recommend trying this kind of design, he says it's a test of patience and persistence. He enjoyed the challenge at the time though. Along the way, he came up with other ideas and discarded many others. When it comes to patterns, he says he doesn't finish much, but what he does release is generally the product of all his iterations and failed tests, so a lot of it lives on spiritually. A while ago, he designed liveries for the cars in Dirt 2 and 3, so skin design isn't new to him. He says he's going to take a break from patterns to instead focus on custom paint and gunsmith finishes. He's truly passionate about the game, not just the skins, but also about playing it. He likes to think that this makes a difference to the work he produces. Thank you to him for giving me so much material to work with. Honestly, there was more, but I think for the first time ever, I was given more content than I knew what to do with for this kind of video. The MP7 Power Core by Endrit is the second in this series to be accepted, the other being the SCAR-20, which was featured back in the Gamma 2 case in 2016. The goal of this series was to transform the weapons into power tools. He took a bit of a break after the SCAR-20, but then went on to make this MP7 design, as well as an AK-47 which is his personal favourite since there isn't yet a bright green AK-47 skin and he thinks it would fit into the restricted category nicely. The Sword Off Devourer by SHPR is part of his street art collection, a series of custom paint jobs with bold and colourful drawn designs. From it, the M4A4 Hellfire has also been accepted, and if you like this Sword Off, then you should also check out his Mac 10 Devourer, which follows the same kind of design. The FAMAS Eye of Athena by Gent comes from an evening of staring at weapon skins, trying to see them in a new way. With the FAMAS, the middle details of the weapon suddenly reminded him of the head of an owl. He imagined an owl flying straight for him, and based this design around this vision. It came as a surprise to him when he woke up and found that it had been accepted. He is very grateful to Valve, and it has changed his life. Having drawn since he was five, he can now justify doing it, and hopes that he'll never have to stop. He wishes everybody good luck with their own designs too. The M4A1S Nightmare by Apple was inspired from a recent episode of Game of Thrones, from an undead horse rider. He also borrowed from the Warcraft realm and the Horse of Arthad when he became a Lich King, but also from the Venom character from the Marvel comic series, and also from the video game Prey. Hidden on the weapon's grip is the silhouette of a girl, whispering to a creature. This is a small easter egg about manipulation, he says. Don't fall asleep. This weapon is one of the items from the Dark Pact collection, which is a series of striking, colourful monster-based designs. Das Das thought about the design of the Code Red for the Deagle for a long time. He loves the style of this weapon, thinking that it's unlike the others. For this skin, he wanted to emphasise the big handle and the length of the barrel. He used a long white band for this and spent a long time picking the right colour. He eventually settled on red, as he doesn't think there are enough red Desert Eagles. 
he thinks he chose the right one, especially after Valve chose his design. The Neon Rider series is a very popular collection of skins that has been around for years. Puffin aims to make one of these a year, treating each like a fictional movie sequel from the 80s. The AK-47 Neon Rider is the second version of this year's design. It was called the Director's Cut, and was made based off community feedback that the first version had received. The original had a much plainer top and an open helmet design, but people thought it was too much of a departure for the series. Another workshopper, called KC Sir, helped to suggest the details and added a normal map to the design. Puffin is very pleased with the result and hopes to collaborate with more people moving forward.